So I've been driving trucks for a while. This is my current truck. Ford F-150 Raptor. I like it. It gets a lot done. It's very utilitarian. Not particularly futuristic. And certainly not electric. Today's video is not about that truck or any truck that I've driven in the past. It's about the future of trucks. It's about this truck. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the Ford F-150 Lightning in the platinum trim, and it's here in the studio. And we're gonna take a look at that. That is so trippy. Little vlogging setup right here. Yes, please. This is such a hugely important vehicle. From the moment that I saw it, I knew it was gonna make an impact. F-150 is a tremendously popular vehicle. Number one, best sold. North America, US, Canada, there's just so many F-150s on the road. And it's because they work. And it's because they appeal to such a wide variety of clientele, people looking for uh, utility, people looking to haul things, outdoors types. It's just uh, a tremendously successful brand. To me, it's the type of approach that Ford needed to take. And they've done so here in the form of the F-150 Lightning. Now, if we look at the front here, it still has that DNA like the grill, it's been modernized. It's unnecessary for it to be an actual intake for air to pass through at this point, but still it's bringing that heritage in the appearance. This light bar that comes across, it's an indication that the future is here, but when it comes to heritage, you can picture this thing at a job site tomorrow, whereas some of those other designs feel a little bit out of place in some of those environments, at least for now. It's not just gonna be for a select group of people. Ford is truly targeting a more typical truck buyer, unlike some of the competitors that are out there that have a much higher price point even to start. Because you've gone electric, you get this huge lockable storage. You get this secure storage at the front. It opens up a whole new level of flexibility for lugging things around. So here is something that you've never seen on a truck before. Look at the size of this thing. This is beyond a front. It's a full out trunk that happens to be in the front and it has utility inside of there that no other front that I've seen has had because it's coming from the perspective of utility. It's coming from the perspective of a truck. Look at this, we have little tie downs so that you can securely get something planted in there. Over here, look at this. How many outlets do you need and want? Four household outlets plus a USB Type-C and a USB Type-A. There's lighting in here so that at nighttime, you can see inside. Underneath this little door, there's even more storage plus this shelf right here, which as you can see has cup holders in it and also a drain because of course, you're gonna wanna throw some beverages in there and some ice and then drain it out after. You see how they think of things. Anything you might wanna do. Can I also do this? You're damn right I can also do that. So now I have cup holders over here as well as some measurements up along top and a spot to possibly put some pens because I'm getting things done because I have an F-150. Lightning. Check out the power, everyone's gonna love it. No need, no need to struggle with a 
heavy tailgate, just beautifully dealing with itself, closing up, secured, and tight. It's gonna take a while to get used to the idea. There's no engine here. That's gonna take a while to get used to the idea. I mean, that's the beauty of it. It just opens up more cargo for you. Now, charging this unit up is gonna happen over here. You can see your typical charge capabilities here uh, inside of the application in the car. It's gonna be able to map out different charge stations and things like this. Ever expanding upgrades coming via software and all the rest of it. A five and a half foot bed on this particular model. Liner sprayed in there. You can see the ability to have these uh, tie downs on the sides as well. Well, this one is also damped. Look at that, it comes down nice and smooth. This is where the lightning shines and, and really goes above and beyond what my truck is currently doing. This is a 240 volt, 30 amp. So a mega output over here. Below there, what do we have? 120, 20 amp times two. So your household outlet as well. And then over here, we have another two 120 volt household 20 amps. You combine that with what you have at the front of the car, plus what you have inside of the car, 11 or 12 outlets, again, adding to the whole versatility conversation. Over here, we have a switch for our lighting, which is in box. So again, nighttime, you need to illuminate, see all the things that you have inside. No problem, just hit the light. This is something Ford has had for a while, but some may have not seen it before. This pulls out to become a step. And for added security, a little grip over here. See, I jumped in without it, but apparently people get injured in this way. So this is the real way you're supposed to do it. And anybody can pull that off. That just makes things a lot simpler and safer if you're up, it, up and into the box on a regular basis. One, two, clicks in, locks in. Same thing over here. Now this is new. I don't have this on my truck either, but you can place tools right on a tailgate and then clamp them in these spots right here so they don't move around. And there's one of those on each side as well, these little doors. I mean, they just thought about so many things here that people might want. You have measurements here, of course, for cutting, could be lumber, something else. You wanna have the metric above and you have imperial below. So both measurement systems, a nice big work area here, big work surface. Again, a spot for pens and things that you might have, a spot for a cup or a drink. Just thinking about so many things over here. Now, of course, since this is the platinum trim, you're gonna have the 360 camera all the way around. This is the fastest Ford F-150. So even though I got that Raptor sitting back there, with the electric motor in here, you're talking about zero to 60, like four and a half seconds. It should beat that one by a little bit. Having driven electric cars in the past, it's that really smooth, consistent power that's available at all times, so. Oh, I should also mention, I almost forgot. This is a huge feature and they showed it off in a demonstration. So not just these, po the power back here is not just available to your tools, but it's also available in reverse. So you can use the vehicle as a generator to power your house for up to three days in the event of a power outage. So you can send power from here to your home no generator necessary as long as this is charged up. So I almost forgot. I should have mentioned it while I was back here. This thing is not just an electric vehicle. It's a generator as well. So here's where it all happens. So this is actually especially exciting for me because I mean, I drive these vehicles. I drive this vehicle. So I can imagine upgrading to this and like what that life is going to be like. So I'm going to start this up, get all the displays going. So this is something that just brings the whole space open. Gets a lot of light inside, huge glass roof. The front section here actually opens completely. Yeah, it's got ventilated seats as well. It's the platinum trim level. So you're gonna have ventilated seats. You probably also have massage seats. If you haven't seen this before, it's 15 inches in portrait. They've maintained a physical volume knob, which to me makes sense. This is a place where tactility is still nice to have. So you can quickly adjust and have that granular level of control across each mechanical click. And that's placed on top of the display. So you still get the full large scale display and digital controls everywhere else. Anyway, so this is a typical gear selector, but when you look at it, you notice that you have this big section down here for it. What do I do? Do I hit this button? Look at this. It folds down completely and you could be like, okay, so that's nice. It gets out of the way and then lift from here. I've just seen this in video, but like, oh my goodness gracious. Now I got to admit, all right, 
every so often, I might have to have a little bite to eat in a vehicle. Having this huge flat surface, that's a dream right there. You slap a laptop right here, you have power right here, there's 12 volt and another household outlet capable of charging at 20 amps, whatever you want. And you're getting work done from like a very comfortable seat, access to everything. From an engineering perspective, it seems so obvious, right? But it just didn't exist. And they did it. They figured it out. It's so quick too to do it. All right, how do I bring the gear selector back up? Just like that. Okay, I need this. This is something that I need. If you've been making the top selling vehicle for a number of years, you're tweaking, you're fine tuning. You're not trying to overhaul something that's working. You're just adding and maneuvering around certain features that maybe you're getting feedback on. Maybe you're getting suggestions on. Things that r real people who use trucks may want to see. And this is this feature right here is an example of that to me. Here's a little spot where I will often put my phone. I'll often just throw my phone like that. It fits so perfectly. You don't have to. Obviously, you have a wireless charging for your phone right down over here. So I just slap that on there, charging up wirelessly. But if you don't want to use wireless charging or your phone doesn't support it, you also have a USB-A port and a USB-C port. I suppose that would also be useful if you want to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. This is also just a nice cubby for storing things. I presume that this is going to open this way too, and it does. That's also lockable storage here for this unit. And then inside of here, we have a little tray for change, odds and ends, and then there's another USB type C and type A. Here's another thing you've got to think about. How does the cable come out if you do have it plugged in down there? How do you get the phone back out of there to possibly sit in here? Well, you carve out a particular spot so it's not getting pinched. You wouldn't believe how many cars don't have a method, a, like a slick method of doing that. Also inside the vehicle, we got this second glove box, another improvement. Oh, anti-slip little mat. That is a very sticky mat right there as well. Below there is your larger glove box. But yeah, that's gonna be for your bigger items. This trim is kind of interesting. This is almost like a speaker grill sort of, but it is futuristic. But you still have your leather trims. You have a familiar steering wheel, controls, on the steering wheel as well. Beyond this large 15 inch display, there's also a fairly generous display in the middle here, which is gonna showcase, well, I mean, a number of things, whatever you want, that you can see like the lane keep assist and all that. So there's a few different massage modes, lower rolling, upper rolling, circular cushion, full recovery, and relax recovery. So it's in massage mode now. You can trigger that from the display or you can do so from the side of the seat. There's a tiny little button there. Beyond massage, there's a tremendous number of uh, adjustments that you can, you can make as far as like lumbar support and just to get your perfect kind of fit for the seat. But what you're about to notice, it's practically flat now. There's a few different drive modes available. So it's set to normal right now. There is also a sport. Let me hit the information. For spirited and engaged driving, it enhances vehicle acceleration, performance, and driving dynamics. All right. Propulsion sound. So you have the optional sound, like a lot of EVs, if you feel it necessary to hear some sort of a feedback. One pedal drive is in there. Allows you to slow down the vehicle or bring it to a stop by controlling just the accelerator pedal. Here is the camera system. So of course you have the bird's eye view. And I can zoom in to any corner of the vehicle to look more closely if I'm about to hit something. Oh, this is cool. So there's also a camera so you can look in your bed. This is important if like, you forgot to tie something down, something was sitting in there from before, or one of the kids left the tailgate open. You just quickly have this camera on there and you check the, you check the bed. You're like, okay, no, I'm good to go. That's pretty sick. Oh, scale. This is wild. The truck has a scale in the bed so that it can tell how much hauling you're doing, how much weight you have back there, and it will adjust your electric range based on how much weight you're carrying. This plays a role in the estimated range rating for the vehicle. So in the upper trim level, Ford was stating about 300 miles. However, that was with a load on board. So it's likely going to perform a lot better than that if you aren't carrying anything, maybe even as much as like 450 miles but because they wanted to be safe on the estimate, they put a load in there, presuming that you know a number of users are going to want to know 
the minimum range more so than the maximum so that they wouldn't be caught off guard. But chances are you're gonna do a lot better than 300 miles if you're not carrying a thousand pounds. 409 miles right there. It's estimating currently without any weight in the bed, 409 miles. Now this Pro Power on board, it actually, look, it, it showcases each circuit, back circuit A, back circuit B, front circuit, and the usage. All right, so Mo is standing on the bed Moving a little bit. Minus are almost 200, that makes sense, right? He's barely shifting it, but Mo's in the back. He's proving the point that there is an actual scale back there. We're good, Mo, we got it. Here's the bi-directional power mode, the ability to transfer power back to your house. With a 100 mile range reserve, it's stating that we could have three days, 20 hours, and 29 minutes of power to the house. Now, obviously this depends on what you're trying to run in the house, but that's a pretty cool feature as well. Yeah, I think I think it'll be all, I think it's gonna be all right with that sound system. All right, let's go ahead and hop in the back seat and see what it has to offer. It's space in all directions. Like this seat is kicked back quite far, uh, as far as the driving position is concerned. But once I slap this down, it's still plenty of room for myself. More cup holder locations in the rear, which is a huge thing that had to happen. It previously only used to be in the little drop down section from the center there, but now there's a cup holder over here in the door, and they got the cup holder cut out in the door frame as well. I can't remember if that was on the old one. It's like a suede-like material here, plus more of the trim. This is a killer feature that lets you store smaller items. It could be some tools, it could be some groceries, things that are liable to, to move around, and then it's out of the way when it's not in use. Oh, by the way, a super flat loading floor as well. So if you have boxes, we pick up a lot of boxes. There's a lot of boxes coming in and out of here. I don't know if you already knew that or not, we pick up a lot of boxes. They can't get wet. We need a nice, like a lot of volume to put them in. So we can stack quite a few boxes without them tipping over. I don't know if you already knew that or not. There looks to be a 12 volt plus another household outlet. And then they also got the new age port, type C plus USB type A. So you can charge up all your devices in the back, whether you got your iPads or tablets or laptops or phones or whatever it happens to be. This interior is interesting too. It's like this uh, gray slate color plus the lighter inserts with the perforated aspect. Of course, you got the platinum badge up there as well. And the nice thing with the glass ceiling is it pays off in the back too because it gives you the sense of space above. Even with the sunroof open, it's still glass. You got glass, you got big windows on the F-150 and check the leg room. So I'm six feet tall. And when I was in the front seat, I had it in a comfortable driving position. And look at this, I could be in here for hours, road trips, it ain't no problem. Couple other little things I noticed, details like this, check it out. You got the lightning bolt plus the American flag over here, these little touches plus the lightning badge over here as well. Now, of course, being an F-150 fan, I know the lightning was a street truck once upon a time. So some consider it to be a controversial name, but actually I think this is the perfect name for this vehicle. Plus it is fast on paper, at least it's a fast truck but it's more about the electricity and the fact that they already had the name. So I like the name, whatever, Lightning, it sounds cool. We got specialized wheels as well. I mean, that's a big wheel. And it's interesting how they try to figure out like this balance between a stylish wheel and also something that's gonna make sense on an electric modern vehicle from an efficiency standpoint. And I think they struck a balance here in this wheel. So you have these large flat regions that aren't gonna suck up a lot of resistance. But then at the same time, it has the appearance of like a bigger, more luxurious wheel at the same time. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter McKinnon, he rolls up in like the coolest ride ever to see the coolest ride ever. Just give me like a brief on this. Okay, brief. We got 1977 Stepside F100. Uh, it's fuel injected now, but it had a carburetor. It's been rebuilt, found it in a barn. Uh, since then we have kind of taken it apart, redone the frame, sprayed it, hood, 
seats. A lot of it's been put back together, but it's a 302 five liter V8. It's super loud. Sounds like the earth is opening up when you turn it on. It shakes the entire house. So I started usually on the road. It stalls eight out of 10 times. I love it. <laughs> how, about this? how about this for a reminder about how long Ford's been doing it? Cool, all right, well, maybe I'll jump inside and check this out after, but I think it's a big deal. Yeah. I think this vehicle is gonna change a lot of things. I think it matters that it's the F-150. You have owned an F-150 for a while. Long time. Same. Long time. So I thought for sure I should call you up and get your take as another F-150 guy and uh, just see how you think it compares. And actually, I'm gonna show you some things. Okay, yeah. If you don't mind. And power, full power Ooh. as well. So no lifting. Wow. I don't know if you've ever put groceries in a truck or anything that can't get wet that you, camera gear. Dude, all of the camera, that's like, that's, it's so, larger than I thought it was. It's the biggest frunk, I believe, that's been shown off period as far as electric vehicles go. Uh, you have tons of power over here. I think there's four household outlets for charging. That's a drain, so you have a cooler. Put your beers, your beverages, whatever you like. It's so trippy to just see a hood open with nothing inside <laughs> it. Like, I'm still I know. processing I that know. part. <laughs> I mean, you got your washer fluid. That's it. That's right? all you got. That's, That's it. all you need. Perfect. That little click at um, the end, so satisfying. Um, wait, wait, can you can you turn it on? Yeah. Isn't it on right now? It's on. I don't think it's fully on. It's, it's not on right now. It's already on. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Is it actually? It. Yeah. Go ahead. Open what? It. Yeah. That is so trippy. Yeah. Hang on. I could do that all day. Wow. It's like you don't even, like just the subtle, the subtle waft of air is all you hear. That's yeah. right there. The yeah, this is there. sick. Yeah, my brother-in-law's got the new F-150. Yeah. Looked at the trim and was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, this so is useful. so nice, dude. Kind of like tactile. Yeah. So you don't have to look at it. It's like the one thing that some people still want. Yeah. A tactile volume knob. It has a wireless Apple CarPlay. It has Android Auto. Um, I feel I mean, like I take the smile off me. <laughs> this is platinum trim, so I don't want to get out. <laughs> I just want to stay in here forever. <laughs> vlogging setup right here. Yes, please. Ford obviously imagines people to use it as a work truck to get things done with it. So then you have this little powerhouse over here. Or two, no, four total, Jeez, yeah. four total. I mean, even if you were doing camping and stuff, you could have all kinds of accessories hooked up to there. Dude, I could run like a whole outdoor lighting portrait setup through that. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. I could right. all my lights in. That's right. Film anywhere. Yeah, you have a lot more power there. Pull yeah. straight from the battery. Vehicle doesn't have to be on. Did you catch the uh, bottle opener here? Oh, I did not. <laughs> little Nice. Both sides. Do you remember the original lightning truck? Yeah, dude. The street truck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are upset that they're using the naming for I the think it's kind of cool that they're reusing it. It almost makes more sense than the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> totally. Yeah. And then, yeah, over here, you have the lightning cool. emblem and the cool. American flag over there. Now, this is also the fastest F-150 ever. Yeah, zero to 60 in what? They're saying like around four seconds, maybe four and a half. We could do a uh, drag race. We could. <laughs> You want to see what's the zero to 60 on that? <laughs> you want to see under my front? 10, 10 seconds. Yeah, let's do that. We saw the future. Woo! A little hot. Oh, cool. There you go. So you can fit absolutely zero golf clubs, <laughs> no groceries. But it makes a cool sound, though. It, it makes a great sound and it looks great. It's where, like, down here, that little tank is where the fuel line runs so that it doesn't stink and it captures all the scent inside a charcoal canister. And unlike the Lightning where you can close the front with a button, <laughs> you have to put an absurd amount of manpower into this hood. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Sorry about the microphone. The old school, uh, I'll let you in on the other side. <laughs> okay. Windows. Actually, that's kind of comfortable seat, right? <laughs> Not bad. You want to hear the horn? Sure. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> Gutless. Does this oh. have air conditioning? No. Oh, I was looking no. at the cool right here. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's just, it's just for show. It's <laughs> cold air that you don't want to put on. So it's, it's set to off. Do the chairs have massage? Um, when you're riding it anywhere, yeah, it's so bumpy that you got a nice massage. <laughs> <laughs> 1977. And then you come down here, adjust your mirror manually. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty great. Cool. Would that have been like that originally? Yeah, originally ships with wood. Um, yep, things are loose. <laughs> <laughs> things are loose everywhere. Grab that side. I'm there we go. Oh. Yeah. All right. Look at that. Perfect. I really want to put an ATV in the back, see how that looks. You need a 1977 ATV though. Or like a 1977 snowmobile or something. Yeah, right. Just a real haggard looking one. These are kind of useful steps on the side. That's a step big side. step. Step side, great, yep. You get the straight box model or you get the step side model. So step side's just got that vintage flair to it, right? Right. Looks a little more old school. If it was straight bed, it wouldn't look as, as vintage and have as much character. So this kind of makes it a little cute which I like. So you get a lot of thumbs up, a lot of high fives. People are psyched when they see you driving down the road. Everyone's waving. I'm waving back. <laughs> That's great. It's crazy to me how much wider that truck is. When you look at it on its own, you don't realize how wide it is, but you see them next to each other. It's also crazy how, how the shapes have changed. Like that is a blunt object moving through space. Yeah, there's really no... There was no consideration of drag coefficient. No. Maybe there was. The mirrors? Dude, the mirrors are like bigger than my rims. <laughs> <laughs>